Oh my gosh, I'm still dizzy from creating this picture the other day that I really love how it turned out, but I was actually hanging upside down on a drum stool. It's one of my first times using the drum stool. It's perfect for levitations and super comfortable. I purchased a stool at Guitar Center and I just laid back and basically the levitation is two pictures, two body pictures combined together. And this was the original background picture I was going to use, but then I decided I liked the other street picture better, so in a minute I'm going to move my entire body onto another picture. It's definitely a lot easier to reduce the transparency of your layer so you know how to match it up with the other layer that I have on the screen. I'm going to create my layer mask and erase away so the body matches up. These are the different background pictures that were options for me to use. I'm going to select both of the layers and just move them onto the background photo that I want to use and I'm going to match everything up but first I'm going to create my layer mask on each layer and I'm going to use the paintbrush tool with black paint over white paint and a, the most hard brush you can go like 100% and I'm going to erase away all the stuff we don't want there so we can make a smooth composite. After that, I'm going to select both layers again, transform it, rotate it a little bit counterclockwise so it looks like I'm more at a, my body is more at a steep angle and have more of that, you know, levitation effect really pop out in the photo. And after masking away with small hard brushes around my hand, I'm going to use a background eraser tool to erase away at the strands of my hair on 12% tolerance, which is usually the percent tolerance I usually use when masking hair I find it to be like the perfect number and then after doing that the next step is to add a shadow underneath my hair just basically painting it in with black paint and then I'm going to rotate my body even more so it's like parallel to the palm trees and now that the entire composite is in place, the last step is to add on some curly hair. My hair is a little short and I kind of wanted longer hair. Once again, I'm using the background eraser tool and the magic eraser tool to erase away at the blue spaces in between the brown hair on the hair layer. And then just really quickly, I'm going to add um, an abracadabra brass knuckles case into my hand. Now the final step, as always, is the color toning. So I always use grainy presets in Lightroom, but like not just any presets, my favorite presets. Then I bring the image back into Photoshop where I just edit the white color of the selective color adjustment tool. And then I'm going to add some film texture, actually two film textures onto the photo by using the screen mode. And it's just some, you know, film textures that I downloaded from the internet. I paid like $10 for them. And you can just see those two layers there. I group them together, and once I do that, that's how it looks before and after. Screen blending mode is the best blending mode for film texture because it takes away the black colors and keeps the whites. And I just love that film look. So I apply, you know, the color toning, the grain, and then the film texture, which all three have an amazing combination and it just makes the colors blend together and makes it look like a smooth composite. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and chat with me in the comments below if you have any comments, requests, advice, you know, even criticism. Hmm, <laughs> who are we kidding? Please don't. No negativity, please. But seriously, thank you for watching my video and I'll see you guys for the next one.